All right. So um, yeah, Firebase Cloud Messaging. Um, raise your hand if you've used it before. Anyone? Okay. I've played with it a bit. Okay, great. With an Android app and. Uh, yeah, actually, with an Android app in Java. Okay, great. So. Uh, what Firebase Cloud Messaging is, is it's a service offered by Firebase, um, a cloud company, sort of, um, that lets you deliver messages to uh, mobile devices and, and websites. So we'll start with a little history, because there have been multiple versions of this service. Uh, in 2010, there was Android Cloud to Device Messaging. It was focused on uh, Android and Chrome extensions. Uh, later on, they renamed it basically to Google Cloud Messaging. It's the same service also for Android and, uh, and uh, Chrome extensions. Uh, the first service doesn't exist anymore. The servers were shut down in 2015 or something. Uh, Google Cloud Messaging still exists, but all websites now link to Firebase Cloud Messaging, which was in, uh, yeah, announced in uh, 2016 at Google I.O. And it sort of did away with the um, fees you had to pay for sending a certain amount of messages because Google Cloud Messaging um, you had to pay until uh, once you reach the certain limit of, uh, of messages. So um, yeah, what can we do with it? So first of all, we can send notifications. So they are just uh, a title, text, and that's basically it. And they're automatically di displayed on the on the device. And yeah, so that's it. That's basically just text. Uh, you can also send simply data, so you can send your own structure basically and have it contain whatever you want, which makes for uh, limitless possibilities. Um, what's also important is that not only can you send whatever you want, you can send it to whoever you want. You can send it to individual devices um, identified by their tokens. You can send it to certain topics, so users can subscribe to topics like uh, politics, and you can send uh, messages to everyone who's, who's subscribed to politics. Uh, you can send it to certain apps because you can have iOS apps, Android apps, uh, web apps. You can have multiple of those. Um, and you can send it to certain platforms so you can choose which platform gets this. All right. Um, I think there's a slide missing. No, okay. Um, so the way we send a notification is that we can do it via the console where we just um, enter information about what text we want to send and when we want to send it and to which app we want to send it. And it's simply received by the, by the Android, iOS, or web app. So that's the really simple way to engage with your users through uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging. Um, all right. So real life examples is we could use it to write an app that lets your users know if their friends are nearby. So you can send a notification if, you, if your server finds out that the distance between two clients is, I don't know, like. 15 meters and their friends and yeah, you could let them know. Um, you could build a chat app and notify the users if they've received a message. Um, and you can also notify them that their favorite series has a new season available. Uh, when to use it. So that's mostly what I would personally recommend. You should or could use it um, if you really want to have uh, easy development, if you don't want to invest too much time in making your own implementation basically of this and having a, a connection between your, serv uh, between your client and your server that you have to manage yourself. Um, if you want battery efficiency, because um, the Firebase Cloud Messaging Service uses a single connection for all apps that use it. So that's a connection that's basically initialized once and it stays open and has a heartbeat that lets you know if the connection is still alive. And yeah, it's, it's just a single connection and yeah. So you also have lower data consumption because of a single connection. When not to use it is basically just if you really need to have the control because it's out of, out of your control if the services are down. It's out of your control if anything changes about the Firebase Cloud Messaging Service. It's out of your control, uh, out of your control when the messages arrive or if they arrive at all. So you can't do anything about it if they don't arrive. That's, yeah, bad luck. Um, so a little overview about how it works. I'm sure some of you already know that concept. It's basically just, it starts with step one that uh, the mobile client registers with the Firebase Cloud Messaging Service. It gets back a token that, that, that identifies it to the Firebase Cloud Messaging Service. It can send that token to your own server. That's 
that's us. Um, and we can store the token in a database, uh, in uh, Redis, or just in memory if we want to. And we can then use this token we have to send a request to the Firebase cloud, cloud messaging servers and send it to the client with that ID. And the servers of Firebase will do the rest, basically. So we don't have to do too much. Um, so how would we go about implementing this? So first, we have to start by creating a project. We have to define a name, and we have to choose a region for our project. Yeah. Um, then we add our app. We can choose an iOS app, an Android app, a web app, whatever. And we have to define the package name of that Android app so it can be identified later on. We, have, uh, we can give it a nickname. And we then download a config file that can be added to our Android or iOS project. And that lets um, the, the library that you use for, for using Firebase on the client side lets it communicate with the Firebase servers through this config file. Um, so next, we have to get an API key. So there are three APIs at the moment for Firebase Cloud Messaging. There's a legacy HTTP API, there's a new HTTP API, and there's an XMPP API. So for this example, this is um, the old HTTP API because it's a lot simpler, and you, don't, you only need a, a single token for your server. So you can get this, this token uh, through the Firebase console. And you basically, you use it in your code to identify that this is the server, and you're allowed to send messages to that client. So in Go itself, we would uh, define a message as a struct, um, give it the fields it needs to send messages to certain clients. So this is all you need, basically. You could even leave out the to field at the very top um, and just get away with the uh, string, string array and put in the data as the IDs you have, the tokens you want to send to, and the data you can use, uh, you can put in whatever you want. You, can, you could replace it with anything. So yeah, you have a lot of freedom. Um, then we create the HTTP request. We put our data in, send it to, to the Firebase URL. The, you can get that on the, the, through the Firebase console. And then we add the, the authorization header, add the server key we got before uh, from the Firebase console, and send off the request. And the Firebase servers will do the rest and deliver the, the message. It's, I think, uh, 120 milliseconds at most for 99% of messages or something like that. So yeah, um, I have an example prepared with an Android app that receives notifications and a server where we can send notifications. So um, we'll start by running the server. All right. Now we have the server running. Um, it's basically just uh, an HTTP server that has a single route uh, where the client can register. And once it does, uh, we have the token and we can send messages through the input here. So we'll just restart the Android app, which will then call the, um, HTT the HTTP server route and register our token. Can I make this bigger? All right. So this is the app. It should now have registered with our server. It did. So now we have the token stored. In this case, for this example, I just stored it in, in memory, basically in, in, in the map. And yeah. So now when I type a message, it sends out the message to all the tokens I have stored in memory. So in this case, just one. And we can do hello, Vienna, go meetup. And you get a response from the server that uh, notifies you if your message was received, if it, was, uh, if it has failed, and why it might have failed. So in this case, it was successful. Um, yeah. So this is, here you can see the, the entire message that's sent off to the server, which contains the, the token we received from the, from the app and the data we have. And now if we switch, oops, if we switch to the app, we can see that we have received the message. So the thing is that it's really simple to send notifications uh, through the service. 
The alternative to this is, of course, you could have a, a TCP connection, a WebSocket connection that you initialize once with a background service for your Android app and uh, send these messages yourself and keep the connections alive to the server. But it's a lot of work for something that, you, that others ha have already implemented for you and it's free. So it's also the recommended way from Google for Android at least. And the Android Studio has, uh, has an, an extra tool basically for putting uh, Android, uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging into your Android app. And right, let's continue. Yeah, that's it. So if there are any questions, feel free to ask.